This is a maker crate that holds a ShopBot desktop that can be shipped with the desktop in it and then made into a stand to put the desktop on. What we'll be walking through here is machining it, assembling it, and showing you some accessories. Here Bell is zeroing his bit to the top of the plywood. This project takes three sheets of half inch plywood. The first sheet starts out cutting three dovetail joints that will be used to hold all the corner pieces together for the crate. This part takes the longest because the X, Y, and Z is all moving up and down and back and forth at the same time. And a lot of different movements are happening to make these joints. However, these joints are very, very strong and will keep your crate together, both shipping and working on it in your shop. So the first sheet takes a little bit longer with the dovetail joints in it. And while you're doing this, you can be prepping for your next couple cuts. And then while you're cutting your second and third sheet, you can be assembling these dovetail joints and making the corner pieces. So we're using a full-size shop bot to cut a crate that will be shipping smaller shop bots in. And once it gets done with the dovetail part, it's going to drill the holes and then it will start going through and out the profile of the different pieces. What you're going to want to have for cutting this successfully is a very flat machine table. Something that you've just recently surfaced and know that it's flat. And you'll also want to have a vacuum hold down. A vacuum hold down does really well holding these pieces from moving back and forth uh, while you're going to cut them. Not having a vacuum, you would have to add tabs and screws to hold it in place, and it would take you a lot of time, a lot of extra time to go through and clean up the pieces. So, all three sheets are filled all the way up, and this first sheet is the one that has lots of different pieces. It takes the longest of the two, of the three. The remaining two sheets are mostly cabinet type parts that are big rectangles and squares. Now that the cutting of sheet one is done, we've got sheet two over on the machine cutting, and here's where we will start gluing up the corner pieces. So you're going to want to make sure you get a good amount of glue in this. You can always sand the glue off later, because these corner joints are what hold it together. The dovetails are a very nice joint because they lock into each other. However, you got to have glue to keep them together for expanding and contrasting. So take get a good amount of glue in, take a brush and wipe it on the different edges and make sure that you've got glue on both sides. And you can push these together by hand if you got a hard hand like Bill here or you can get a rubber mallet. You're going to want to have a lot of clamps if you're going to do all of these if you're going to glue all these up at the same time. It takes a lot of clamps. You're going to want to put one on each joint there. It sucks it together and it'll hold it in place while the glue sets up. And find a, like a towel rag and just wipe off any loose glue. You can always come back and sand afterwards. So while we're while Bill's over there gluing up right now, video in the shop bot working away on sheet number two. So that's the nice thing about this. If you cut the dovetail joint sheet first, you can be working on that while the shop bot cuts the remaining sheets. So these next two start out with a V carve bit where you're going to V carve the ShopBot logo into the panels and it'll do the V carve bit and then you can switch and run the um, profile passes around it after that. So you'll see the parts are starting to come together. We've got the V carve on there. We've got the holes for the T nuts and it's cutting it out. These T nuts are going to go on the back side of all your panels. The way we normally do it here is with a rubber mallet pushing them in. But there's about a hundred of those that need to go into a project. So what Bill's created here is a fixture where he goes flips it to the back side and you just start the beat the T nut by hand. And what this is is a press. It's a press you can find on Amazon. You could go to Grizzly or Woodworker Supply. And he's taken the press and put a flat end on it. So now when he pulls the lever down to it, this press will push the T nuts perfectly straight down into the material. When you're doing crates like this and you got a lot of T-nuts, this is the way to go. You're going to be doing a lot of hammering and a lot of effort in 
doing it with the hammer but if that's if you're doing one or two of them that's a way to go if you're going to get into doing these efficiently this press is a great option and here's just an up close shot showing you how effortlessly this takes to push t-nuts into all these panels there's also going to be two t-nuts in each bottom support so the, a, a larger t-nut and you'll put two of them in each side so that shows them pressed in there where they're flush so again we've got the machine on the back cutting and Bill's now standing up the dovetails with any glue what you're going to have here on the end though is a little bit of extra of wood that is created by this by gluing these up at a 90 degree so here he is pushing that in and getting rid of that nip and right there you can see you grab that's a little bit extra material that we can't have for all the corners to come together so just push that into a sander it cleans that off and a feature that's really nice to add to it is routing the edge put a nice round over edge on it it's nice for walking into in the shop and won't catch on anything in shipping and now it's time to start us putting it together so we'll loosely put the two front and backs on and notice the t-nuts are on the opposite side so this is the bottom piece so the good veneer is either on the bottom or this is the shelf whatever you want so we'll start here by putting these pieces notice we don't put bolts on the sides yet because we gotta take and construct these two bottom pieces so you've got a lot of holes in these holes for the bolts holes for the t-nuts and notice we get them all lined up the t-nut piece is not the bottom it's the second one in and that's why when you screw up your lags for your um, casters or for your feet uh, it'll go in there and grab and actually get extra strength through there and after filming this I realized that we could take and flip that t-nut over t-nut piece and have that from the back side that way that t-nut is actually going to be pulling through both pieces instead of just that one so I would flip the second piece over put your bolts in now here's Bill putting it together and here we're using these longer bolts instead of the short ones that we were using on the front and back so get these lined up and then tighten them down into the t-nuts of the bottom piece so you'll do this uh, on both sides and this makes it nice so you can stick a forklift or a pallet jack underneath this and now we're done with the bottom we'll flip it over and start building the crate up vertically so you got some u-shaped pieces you're gonna have two in the front and two in the back and then you'll have two solid sides and then the front and the back of the create have a little removable piece that'll actually be able to come in and out as you want to store stuff or add things to inside the crate. So the U-shaped pieces go on the bottom and we start putting the sides in and just go around and start with your with your bolts putting them in and loosely getting it together so it holds in place. Once you get stuff the bolts in there and parts in then it's nice to get a set of torque wrenches, power battery operated wrenches and, and, and go a little bit quicker. So a lot of bolts, a lot of fasteners going on here, but it makes a sturdy, strong crate. So so we're just tightening them in here to the bottom and the bottom corners holding the sides in place and then we'll start building the corners that go vertical. So you've got three different lengths of corners. You've got fronts, backs, sides and then your vertical pieces so once your vertical pieces start going in place then you can start adding the other horseshoe piece so the shorter ones on the bottom and the longer one comes down on top and what this is letting us do is now go and start bolting all four sides together so we're gonna bolt all four sides and next thing we'll do is lay the top panel in place on top and then put the top corners all the way around These, these do go together real nice. It's a real fun project to put together. Put the top in. The T-nuts are towards the inside of the crate. Start dropping your four corners in and lagging those both into the side and into the top piece. So really we've made the whole structure of the crate. The only thing we have to do left is bolt on the front and back removable doors. And that's just for opening up and, and, and storing stuff in there. Uh, and the shows it's really nice to open them up throw the stuff in there that we have for packaging and shipping and then just keep them closed up
All right, let's set this guy up. So, first thing we're going to do here is we can take and put a set of wheels or we can put a set of leg levelers on this. Depending on if you're going to roll it around or if you want it to be stationary. When the machine comes, all you need to do is pull the set of top ones off one side of the corner pieces and that top will lift right off. But pull your machine out, put the top back on, and then, then put your machine on there and now you've made it a workbench. So, some accessories for the Maker Crate. You can use for a lot of different options here. One is just having your computer mounted to it. Make this whole unit stand alone. So once your desktop's on there, using four longer bolts, remove a few from the side, and then mount this top stand. Another thing that's really nice to do with this is you can turn this into a desk. This way you can put a chair underneath it for working. Uh, you can roll a wheelchair underneath it. So what we're doing here is here's our crate that we had just got done putting together and instead of putting the face on it and the wheels what we're going to do now is remove a few pieces and there's an optional two horseshoe shaped parts that you can cut one for the front and then one for the bottom so instead of having the flat flat bottom that's a shelf now it's something that you can uh, roll a chair up underneath and turn this into a desk so yes you do the crate does when the crate comes assembled like this you do have to take several parts apart to get these pieces out you have to take the two bottoms you have to take some all four corners off and then you'll have to pull the u-shaped pieces out but the nice thing about once you get it all apart is the two new pieces slide right in and everything bolts right back together so remove the bottom remove the two front pieces and here we go we'll stick the, the new front in and the new bottom in and just put things back together so just everything lines right back up just start with sides and one thing you're gonna have that's different now too is you're gonna have two little short corner pieces for the front so to make that trim match all the way around to see we're putting these two little corner pieces in so just little short corner pieces and bolt those right in just like everything else it's real useful to have a nice battery powered wrench for that and we gotta put the bottom two pieces back on and then decide if you want to put casters on it or your leg levelers but bolt everything in make sure you snug stuff you can definitely over tighten things and pull pull through the wood but just get everything snug the the crate goes together real nice this is a real neat option to add at the end and makes it real convenient to make it a uh, more of a desk that you can work it work it from there we go i hope you enjoy your maker crate and get some good use out of it with your shopbot desktop